Hi, it's Raphael from DGraph. So welcome to this tutorial about um, automatic data classification using LLM GPT models in DGraph. So in fact, we will uh, see how easy it is to add any logic to augment your data with meaningful knowledge. So I will use the data that um, I have introduced in the video about rapid application development with DGraph. The data set is about donation to project issued by public schools in the US. In this data set, for example, we have projects and categories such as math and science, and health and sports, or history and civics. The category is given by the person creating a new project. So what we want to do is to see how we can use the LNM generalized pre-trained model to automatically set project categories based on the semantic proximity between the project title and the different categories. So we will use the vector semantics to do that. There are plenty of good references out there, but a brief recap of what we want to achieve there. When we will create a category, we want to find a semantic representation of it. The same for the project. And the goal is to find a similarity between the semantic representation, and when we have a good similarity, then we can infer that the project is linked to the category. The semantic representation is basically a vector that will be returned by the Open API services. And finding the similarities is just about finding cosine distance between vectors and compare them with the different semantic representations of the different categories. So let's see how easy it is to implement this approach in DGraph on an existing GraphQL schema. So I have set up a DGraph cluster on cloud.dgraph.io and um, I just deployed my um, schema about the donation. So we have schools, project, categories, cities, but in this tutorial we'll just uh, use project and categories. So basically when you deploy this uh, schema, you already have your GraphQL endpoint as we saw in the rapid application development uh, tutorial and we are ready to um, uh, use this API. So I will use it from uh, Postman. I just have to copy my GraphQL endpoint from DGraph. So in Postman, I can just use my endpoint here to use the introspection. And for example, I'll use a mutation to add a project. So let's do a simple mutation here. And we are creating um, a project uh, with a category. Back to DGraph Cloud, we can rapidly check in Studio that we have a project, uh, the project as a category. So that's what we want to replace. So user will not have to enter the category and it will be associated uh, automatically through semantic similarity. The first step will be to tell DGraph that we want to do something when a category is added and when a project is added. So we are using a Lambda on mutate directive to tell DGraph that we want to invoke a specific logic when we have an add on this uh, object. So we can deploy them. Now we can implement the logic itself and it's done in JavaScript into the Lambda section. First, we have to register the two services that we will use. So we have one for category add and one for project add. Let's um, see the add category webhook first, which is simpler. So in the add category webhook, um, I can be invoked uh, with many uh, creation at the same time in the event. So I have to loop through the different add events. And what I will do is basically um, calculate an embedding vectors. And I will use the fact that we can augment the graph itself. So I will create a mutation and then I will add an embedding information to the uh, node that has been added. So that's really interesting in DGraph is um, a, the fact that you can always add knowledge uh, on your data and additional things that are not necessarily exposed in the GraphQL API. So here we are using the embedding uh, information on the category node. Computing the embedding is straightforward thanks to the Open API uh, service. So you just have to register to OpenAPI, get your uh, developer key, and then you can invoke this service with a text and it will give you back uh, uh, vectors 
depending also on the model that you want to use. So here we'll, we will use the embedding uh, ADA002 model and it will just return the vector for us that we will uh, keep in DGRAPH. And that's basically it for the category. So we can start playing with this uh, uh, logic. So in Postman, um, let's create some categories. So in these simple mutations, I'm adding a tech category. The name is Math and Science. I can do the query. It's added. I can add also, for example, um, another category for Earth and Sports. And I have the other one, History, Literacy, and Music, and Special Needs. So if you look at the data from the um, GraphQL uh, API, we can do that in Data Studio here. You'll see that I have my category created, and this is all what is accessible from GraphQL. But we can look at what is stored in DGraph using a DGraph query language. So from Rattle, we can uh, use a DGraph query language request to get the categories and check if we have this embedding information that um, we have added with our webhook. So you see its category with name as also uh, the vectors that has been returned by the OpenAI uh, service. So we are in good shape. Let's do the same for the project and add the uh, logic to compute the most similar uh, category. So the logic for a project is very similar. When we add a project, we first get all the um, uh, categories vectors and then for each added project, we compute the embedding for this uh, project title. And then we'll go through the different categories and compute the uh, uh, dot product. And at the moment, we are save saving the similarity for every node because I wanted to have this knowledge in the graph. But I'm checking which one is the closest. And that's the one that I will elect as the category for this project. And I can just run a mutation that will update my graph with this information. The dot product is a very simple uh, computation on the two vectors. And the mutation is also straightforward with the DQL um, object that is accessible from the webhook. So when we have this in the project, we can go back to uh, Postman and do some tests. In Postman, I have a simple mut mutation that is creating a project. So for example, this multi-use chairs for music classes. And let's create another project, which will be photography and memories. The yearbook and we we have that's another much needed acid cabinet so in this case you see that we have not added any categories and we just created the project so we can double check now by querying the data and ask for all the projects that are stored and you see that all the projects they have been associated with a category and hopefully the semantic Proximity is correct. So, for example, the acid cabinet is probably math and science. Photography is arts, music and arts. And the chair for music classes is music and arts. This one was probably easy because of the music uh, uh, word. For the other, as you can see, we don't have the music or arts word into the title itself. So it's really a semantic proximity that we've used there. The same for the acid cabinet with math and science. We can have a look at the graph for a specific project just to see um, what the data that has been added to our um, information. So we are requesting uh, for a specific project, so the, the, the project about an um, acid cabinet, for example and checking if we have this embedding and what we also computed in terms of similarity and the similarity um, relationship they have also um, the cosine uh, attribute that we want to see and we want to see the category that has been uh, selected so we can show that as a graph and you can see that this project is related to all these different categories and for each one we have the cosine distance and the relationship and the one that was the closest 
has been selected as the uh, final category for this project. But it's interesting to note that you can store any valuable information into the graph. So maybe we should keep this information because if we remove this category, we can easily recompute the closest category without uh, a need to invoke OpenAPI again. And we can just uh, get the distance that we have pre-calculated here. So that's it. It's something we can do in a few minutes. You can uh, start from your GraphQL schema, just register some webhooks um, on the types that you want to compute some semantics vectors, implement your logic using the lambdas, um, leveraging the open API to get the vectors, save them into dgraph, do some computation, infer some relationships, and uh, update through mutations. And this can be done completely on uh, DGraph Cloud. So I'm sure you have many ideas to test from there. Happy coding with DGraph. <laughs>